All right, good evening, everybody. Tonight, I'm going to be working on trying to run my conduit with my AC outline from this panel over my office and into the panel that it's going to be taken over. Um, we will see if I have enough cable to get that far. I had ordered initially the cabling to run for the AC input. But due to supply shortages, uh, the cable that I was planning on using for the AC output uh, is out of stock everywhere that I can find it, or it's just astronomically more expensive. So I'm going to look and see if I can use the current 4-gauge wire that I have uh, purchased for the AC in from the grid and see if I can use that temporarily until I get uh, the wire that I was looking for for the AC output. The wire that I was looking for for the AC output was larger gauge. I believe it was a uh, two gauge service entrance wire that I was gonna run from this panel over to the, the main panel that I'll be taking over. Uh, kind of future proofing, allowing for uh, down the road, putting in another set of these to be able to supply even more power uh, just to take over all my loads altogether. So this will be a continuation of trying to take uh, as much as possible off grid. So I'm trying to utilize um, the hardware and, and the pieces of equipment that I currently have and trying not to go to the store and buy more because things are just getting to be more and more expensive. So I'm trying to make everything work with what I have while still doing it right. So now that I think a little more about it, I'm probably not going to be able to get the wire hooked into the panel today. Uh, but if I can at least get it run, get the conduit bent, and even get the wire in the conduit, that might get me uh, a ways ahead. I know coming up, I still have to go through and make some more stands for my solar panels outside i have two more 440 watt panels that are not being used right now and once i get everything hooked up and start adding more loads i could definitely use more solar and then i even have my 12 100 watt panels that i need to make stands for and i've got some placement i want to try and split one of my strings in half so i can have some more sun hit one string earlier in the day and then another string later in the day instead of having one long string along my fence line that's going to end up getting drastically reduced because I'm going to be having it in series and once you start getting sheeting on one section of your series you're just going to throttle down your uh, ability to produce. So lots of stuff to still go on even without making a lot of purchases. I do have something coming to potentially replace this. I just don't like how this is working out right now. So I'm hoping within the next few days that will show up and we can see how f we can really improve on this without trying to cram so much stuff into a single conduit, make all these odd turns. And then even with the work that we did last time, I am considering swapping out this panel here, trying to run all that four gauge wire in there. It's really getting tight uh, along the same reasons of the one inch conduit. It's just getting very tight to work with. So I might end up having to upgrade that to a larger panel even a what is that right now a six slot so even a 12 slot you know doubling it in size might give me enough space but it's something that I'll have to consider uh, within the next short amount of time definitely before I go and hook in the AC output because there's just there's just not a lot of room in there right now so right now you can see I've got my one inch conduit run up over top of the ductwork. 
it's going to come out just on the left hand side of this panel here. Half of my office is a drywall ceiling, the other half is a drop ceiling. And you can see the conduit coming right there. I have two 10 foot sections hooked up right now. So it'll come through this channel. And then I will uh, bend it, drill holes through these three studs, and then it will come down directly here on the left hand side of my panel. Just today I received my interlock kit, which I installed. Uh, very simple, very basic, but uh, it does not allow my mains to be turned on at the exact same time as my uh, solar supply. I've heard many horror stories of people who have unintentionally turned on their mains and their solar supply and fried their inverters. So knowing the little oopses and accidents that I've had just because I move too fast and I'm just trying to get things accomplished, I have a feeling that I would be one of those guys that would have that oops moment. And it's a very expensive oops moment when, you know, 50 bucks can save your, save your hardware. So the reason that I'm going with uh, this ENT conduit, I know a lot of people are using the liquid tight, but that stuff gets to be very expensive, uh, especially when you start looking at the fittings. These are a couple of bucks per fitting, maybe a buck and a half. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head how much the conduit was, but this is one inch. Um, I can, you can see, I can put a good bend in it if I need to. Uh, I have yet to try if I need to get an excessive bend applying heat, but I think that that should really give me the ability to take almost any form that I need to, but to add my coupler, slide it right over the end, give it a good push. So you hear a few clicks and you can see that it's locked in right there. So I'm going to try something that I learned from an electrician at my church. So we were trying to run, uh, let's see, what was it? Some fish tape through a conduit underneath our parking lot. We were finally getting internet to the church and we had a cable or a conduit underneath the parking lot and we needed to get some fish tape in it for the internet company to be able to pull their line. And we had to clean out the conduit and everything. The electrician showed us this little trick where he took a Ziploc bag, tied some of his own fish tape to it, kind of poofed the connection or poofed the bag out a little bit. And then he stuck the bag right into the end of the conduit. This is not easy to do with one hand. Okay, so we've got our wad of fish tape down here. Then we go to the other side and we use the hose from a vacuum and suck fish tape right through the conduit. So we've got our vacuum cleaner all plugged in. Grab the hose end and come right to the end of our conduit. Again, let's see if I can do this with one hand. Let's use a toe. <laughs> Looks like our wires all bound up and that's why we weren't getting anywhere. Let's 
give ourselves a little bit of slack. All right, let's try this again. Grab our hose, put it over the end, and and there we go. Now the fun part of getting this out of the vacuum. There we go. So now I can bundle my wires together, tie them to the end of the fish tape, and then just pull them through and not have to worry about uh, things getting kinked or bent or uh, caught up on a curve. So I'll get them set up through this straight away first, and then uh, we'll see about getting them over to the panel. So there's our conduit. And then over here, a few feet left on this side as well. So I have one, two, three joists that I need to drill through. It's gonna make a horrible mess. Got my little bit of a bend right there coming down so i'll just have to pull it straight out this line might end up becoming the permanent line going to uh, the panel to take over the panel from my solar setup so when it comes time to hooking up the grid power i can either pull a fish line to get my length before i order the line or since i'm looking to expand this panel size to a larger panel, I can potentially move some of the breakers over from this panel, thus freeing up some circuits in here, and then I could actually use my grid supply from here, feeding up and over to my box over there. And that would significantly shorten my cabling needs, seeing that this sub panel is set up for 200 amps. I could supply the power that I need. A lot less cable I'd have to get. In the long run, you're looking to spend 300 plus dollars getting four gauge wire to go up and over and all the way over to where the panel is that I was gonna hook up to. Factoring in the shorter cable length, the cost for the shorter cable length, plus the cost for the breaker for this panel, plus the cost for an upgraded panel here, I think it would significantly save me some money. Definitely something to think about. So my line will be coming in back over here. That was my old range feed line. And it'll come down and hook right into this uh, double breaker right here, the double 60. I think it just went in. Yes. Sweet. That was a pain. Bend up in there. And if you look, I've got this stupid little header right here. 
there's my fitting and I had to get that bend in there so that then I could get the conduit to lock in. And then I've got plenty of extra wire here that I can work with that I'll end up pulling back through quite a bit. So I had installed this interlock kit today thinking that, hey, good, great, it was all hooked up. But I have to actually take it off. Yeah, this kit has tabs that hooks onto this double breaker. Phase two, ground, and our neutral. And this will all be coming into our double 60 amp breaker, which is our standby or solar connection for this panel. All right, we got all the mess cleaned up in the office. I'll show you that in a little bit once we get everything else done, but now we're to the point that we need to move this conduit to the other side of that trunk line and then drop it down over here. All right, well, I don't have any fitting that I can use to hook into the top of the panel up here. And when I have to pop that top, it's gonna be very sharp. So I really don't think that I wanna mess with not having the conduit fitting there. And coming into the office, put the ceiling tiles back up, put pipe clamps on my conduit, and my interlock kit is ready to go. Well, like I said, I am out of the conduit fittings for the ENT conduit. Uh, they are out of stock in most of the stores in my area, so I had to order some online. I'm hoping they should show up by the end of the week. But I also have my alternative to this box showing up, which should also help if I can get that in around the same time that those conduit fittings show up. Then I'll be able to get all of this replaced and my AC output line in my panel. I might stop at the store and look at what the costs are on the larger box so that if I can just do it all at once, get it all done, uh, it'll make my life a whole lot easier. You, you do what you can with what you got. Maybe tomorrow night I will be working on adjusting my solar panels outside so I can get those last two hooked up, at least my last two large ones. I have some lumber that I can use to make at least one more stand. We'll have to see how far I can get on that tomorrow night. Y'all have a great night. Thanks for watching.